I like to start off like we always did in, in the locker room and we would meet, we would all get on the same page. So if I say, give me two claps, I want y'all to give me two claps. <laughs> Not yet. Hold on now. Hold on. We got to be a team here. Can't be going off running your own plays now. If I say, give me three, you're going to give me three, okay? Give me two claps. Give me three claps. Give me two claps. There we go. Let's go. All right. So I'm very passionate about teaching agents about production. Like she said earlier, me and my wife started in our 20s, uh, independent brokerage, and scaled it to 1.1 billion in sales, which is hard to fucking do, forgive my language. Um, but I'll tell you today, I want to pivot because I'm also passionate about teaching athletes and agents about financial literacy. Because you guys have probably seen the 30 for 30 broke series about how many pro athletes make money and then go broke. Well, there's a pandemic in the real estate agent space too. The word we just go out and we just sell real estate, we just sell real estate, we make cash, we make cash, but we don't set ourselves up to retire. We don't give ourselves options. And I'm very passionate about that. So as much as I wanna talk about production and teaching you how to go scale and sell millions of dollars, which I actually just hit a milestone. I closed my 60th $1 million transaction this week. Um, in three years, in College Station. So. I'm obviously not in Beverly Hills, but $61 million transactions in College Station is, is also hard to do. But I'm only saying that to say I'm very passionate about production and teaching you guys how to scale and how to sell more real estate. But today we're going to pivot. Is everybody cool with that? Yes. yes. Okay. So you got to think about financial literacy. This is something that's not taught in our schools. It's not taught in college. And really, we're, we're thrown into the world as professionals to try to figure it out on our own. And the reason why I'm very passionate about it is because I've seen a lot of athletes that struggle with financial literacy. But now that I'm in the real estate agent space, I see a lot of real estate agents doing the same thing. And I always ask, when is the last time you've been to a real estate agent's retirement party? Never. We don't retire. We just sell real estate till we're just burned out. And it's something that we got to fix. So. According to the IRS, most millionaires have seven income streams. This is this is statistic. And this is how it's kind of broken down. Dividends, dividend income from stocks owned, earned income from paychecks, rents from rental real estate, royalties, obviously from selling the rights to use something that you either wrote or you invented or created a patent or something. Capital gains from selling appreciated assets and profits from businesses that you own and then interest from savings, CDs, you can read the rest. Now, that's the average millionaire. And we're very caught up in, we just gotta sell more real estate, we gotta sell more real estate, but I want you guys to have options, because I say a person with options is a person with what? Power. If you have no options, you have no power. I would love to talk about selling more real estate, but that keeps you on a hamster wheel. So I wanna talk about giving you options to spend more time with your family, to go do things that you want to do. Because the average, can, it, can anybody tell me what the average age of retirement in the U.S. is? Anybody know? 65. 63 to 65. I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to go do what the hell I want to do. And I heard this in Cabo from Glenn Sanford. And he said, being successful is being with who you want to be with, going where you want to go, doing what you want to do at any time you want to do it. That's the freedom that we need to have. And if I decide I want to go get these listings this week, great. But I'm not forced to feel like I'm on that hamster and I have to do it. So when I retired from the NFL, I was depressed. I had a really bad neck injury with the Packers. I was in Aaron Rodgers draft class and you don't have to watch football. You know who Aaron Rodgers is. He's the highest paid player in football history, two time MVP. He was our first pick in the draft. I was the second pick. We we're roommates. And I was on pace to go and have a Hall of Fame career and I got injured. And then it forced me to have to have this conversation with myself. What am I going to do with my life? And what am I going to do with the seed capital that I have from getting drafted? Well, I knew nothing about financial literacy. So I started really diving into these topics. And I read 40 books in 16 months. And now I have over 550 books in my library. And everybody in my organization is doing a 52 book challenge. We're reading one book a week. So everybody. And I'm trying to get them to understand. We're going to talk about this before we close. But before you guys leave the room, I'm going to challenge you. I want you to think about not a realtor or a broker. I want you to see yourself as a real estate entrepreneur. Because when you think like an entrepreneur, you think differently. So OPM, 
which can anybody tell me what OPM is? Other people's money, leverage, velocity of money, personal financial statement, and net worth. So I'm gonna talk fast because I don't have a lot of time. So OPM, these are just some topics that I don't have time to really dive into, but I just wanna wet your palate on something you need to be researching, books you need to be looking up, YouTube videos, my man in the back. Look, I bet there he's probably got some videos on that. But OPM, other people's money. So substantially increase your returns and secure even more assets. Really understanding what that is. Like I said, I don't have time to break it down today. I want you to write that down and look at it. Spend some time understanding what OPM means and why it can benefit you. Here's the beautiful thing about real estate sales. It's a low barrier of entry for us to get in, right? I know people who can get their license in three weeks, right? But we have an opportunity in that first year to make six figures, 100, 200, 300, 400 K. Some of us are making millions of year, right? So you're making what some pro athletes are making. You just don't even know it. You're making millions of dollars. But if you're not understanding financial literacy, or if you're putting in all that work just to hand over your financial class and your financial assets to an advisor, you should put the same energy that you did in creating that money into studying financial literacy. So that's why I'm just talking, this, talking about it for you guys. So leverage. This is the meaning of leverage. Financial leverage is the use of debt to buy more assets. Leverage is employed to increase the return on equity. As much as I would love to break down this chart and really dive into it, I don't have time today, but I want you to be thinking about assets, debt, and equity. Assets, debt, and equity. The one thing that you gotta understand is the American dollar is a, can somebody tell me what type of currency it is? Thank you, fiat currency. Right, so it used to be backed by gold. Ronald Reagan took, took us off the gold standard, now it's backed by, in the yellow, anybody know? Debt. So what does that mean? You're probably like, dude, we're here to talk about selling real estate. Yes, we are, but I want you to also be financially free and have this in your toolbox. But you gotta leverage it in order to keep it growing at the rate. On average, America's inflation rate was two to 3%. Anybody know what it was last year? 8%, they just, 8%, 8%, did y'all hear that, 8%. So here's why you need to understand that 8% 8, 8 inflation hurt a lot of people last year. Because if you, which I grew up in East Texas with a single mom, there was no financial literacy in my house, there was no entrepreneurs, no one taught me about money, and I was taught to save, just save it. Whatever you make, put it in the bank. Put it in the bank. Here's why savers are losers. The US dollar's purchasing power since 1913 is doing what? Going down. There's the chart. And you know why? Because they're printing more money. So it's, if they're printing more of what you have in your pocket, then obviously the value of it's gonna go down. And if it's backed by debt and not gold, then you have to play the game, which is leverage. So I know y'all are just looking at me glazed over, but the point is, if you're taught to just go out and sell real estate, sell real estate, sell real estate and save, you're hurting yourself, okay? And we gotta remember, in this industry that we're in, when we do our jobs, we get fired. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. If, if I'm your client, and you, take a, you, you do your job, you do an amazing job, you help me buy a house. At closing, give me my keys, let's, let's take our closing photo. Terrence has been awesome. Now you have no job on Monday. You gotta go back out and start over. And the only way you don't is if you have a developer or a builder or someone who's got you know, consistent inventory. And I remember I was at a conference with Frederick Eklund and he and I ended up meeting, became friends, and he was saying, Terrence, if you really wanna scale, you got to have a developer. Well, that taught me a lot, but then it also taught me if I'm dealing with the first time home buyers or people who are buying one house, I don't have a job next week. So I gotta be making sure that I know every time I make a commission, I have to have a plan for that money. And it can't be this, because if you made whatever you made last year and put it in the bank and you did nothing with it, you didn't invest it, you paid the bank to hold your money because inflation is 8%. And we know CDs and money markets are not paying 8%. So velocity of money, 
Has anyone ever heard of the topic of velocity money? Raise your hand. One, two, three. Okay, we got a couple. Here's how you have to not only leverage the dollar, but the velocity of money is the frequency in which one unit of currency is used to purchase domestically produced goods and services within a given time period. Also real estate, businesses, blah, blah, blah. In other words, it's the number of times one dollar is spent to buy something per unit. So velocity of money. If you take leverage and velocity of money from the commissions that you made, that's how you build your assets. That's how you get off the hamster wheel of selling real estate. So I want to talk about this. When you use velocity of money and leverage, it benefits your personal financial statement. Raise your hand if you've put together a personal financial statement in here. OK, that's good. That's a good amount of y'all. If you haven't, I want you to do it today. So I'm going to show you how to build out one. When you think about Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, do you ever hear about their credit? No. You hear about their what? Net worth. Net worth. So if we know that, once again, I'm giving you guys some amazing like, thoughts, and I'm not patting myself on the back. This is something that took me years to figure out. But if that's the case, if we're not hearing about their credit, their net worth, then we know we need that balance sheet for ourselves to build. So why you should be tracking and updating your personal financial statement, which is also called a balance sheet. Here's what a financial statement is in a balance sheet. You can literally build it on a spreadsheet. It could take you 15 minutes. And it's important to track it. These are statements that outline individuals' assets and liabilities to reveal their net worth. And also, it makes it easier to track your assets and worth over time. So if you're investing and doing something, if it's not positively impacting your net worth, then you probably need to pivot and do something else, right? Are y'all with me? Yes. I'm not, I'm, I know I'm not talking social media. <laughs> I'm not talking sales today. I'm talking what really matters in the end and what's going to get you to have freedom and options to go where you want to go, do what you want to do, and then leave your kids with something of value. You know, when is the last time you've heard of a real estate agent, individual agent, sell their business to someone else? That's also hard to do. When I first got in the industry, there was people still doing it. But then the word got out. You're just buying a database that's not committed to using you. So you're paying a multiple on something that you really don't own. So you got to be thinking about assets and why we need to have a balance sheet and a financial statement. So here's just a basic, this is just a basic fundamental. I mean, you can get these things really complicated, but I want you to see this. This is something that's left up for debate. I'm going to give you a quick way to figure this out. What's an asset? What's a liability? Does anybody think your personal home is an asset? OK, there's a lot of people that think that. Yep, I thought so too. Here's how it's broken down. If it pays you, it's an asset. If it doesn't pay you, it's a liability. OK, so if it's paying you, it's an asset. If it doesn't pay you, it's a liability. So just break it down, savings, checking. Obviously, you guys can go through that. You can put your personal house as an asset on your balance sheet. But thinking about it as an investor, if it's not paying you, it's not an asset. But you take your assets, take your liabilities, and then it spits out what your net worth is. So as you guys start investing and becoming real estate entrepreneurs, when you're buying real estate, when you're buying other businesses, like E said earlier, I've founded or started 20 plus companies, but I've invested in over 30 more. So I'm, invest I'm invested in over 50 companies. But the point is, what we're gonna use to get that leverage and get that loan, your credit, yes, they will run it, but the first thing they want to know is, send me your balance sheet. Like, you're going to send in your balance sheet and you're going to send in your tax returns. And then the asset that you're buying is going to underwrite the loan. Anybody know underwriting? So underwriting is something that's going to tell you if, if they're going to give you the loan. It's going to be based on this. So that's why I'm pushing you guys. I'm really trying to push you alls thoughts today to be thinking about this stuff. Because you're selling real estate day in and day out. Why don't you own a lot of real estate? 
Because when I was a young athlete, young athlete, we would get so many people trying to get us to invest in stuff. You know, one of the best things that helped me scale my real estate sales business is all my clients would ask me, well, how many rental properties do you own? How many assets do you own? And I was able to confidently say, I'm showing you these properties on this block because I own this whole street across. Well, that's to so sign off. Great. What do, I, what do I need to write the offer? So you need to be investing in what you're selling, right? No different if you were in another space. It's like you got to be selling a product that you believe in. It's the reason I couldn't become a coach because I'm an Aggie through and through. And so I'm not going to go to another university and try to sell that university because I know I wouldn't be it wouldn't be real. So in my opinion, my other challenge to you guys is how can you start investing and start creating passive income? And I'll close with this. Why does your net worth matter? I pretty much have already went over that. But it's the single most important financial metric. They aren't teaching us this in schools. But I promise you, when you get with high net worth individuals and when you get with family offices, you guys are probably dealing with family offices because y'all are in Austin. This is what they're talking about. They're talking about AUM, which is assets under management, or they're talking about um, balance sheets. All right. If you had a brokerage that you scaled to a billion dollars in sales, why did you partner with eXp? Well, I want to challenge you based on what I was talking about today. I want you to go from being a realtor to a real estate entrepreneur, multiple income streams. So the people that are a part of our organization at eXp, I wanted to set them up. I pretty much as the broker said, I need to give everybody a seat at the table, not just me, the broker, where I own the company, they pay me. No, everybody needed a seat at the table. So we have active income and referrals. We have residual income where you can literally get ownership in the company. Sustainable Equity, Icon Agent Award. Did you know at the Icon Agent Award, which I still couldn't believe it when I heard it, is that when I Icon and pay in my cap, they give it back to me in stock? Who does that? That blew me away. And in Agent Equity, that just means instead of me paying a transaction fee, every transaction, five to six percent, I can take that five percent. I'm already paying it at other franchises anyway, but I get to buy EXP stock at a 10 percent discount. And then obviously grow a team, individual versus tactical team. Rev share. So we know what profit share is, but rev is profits off the bottom of a balance sheet, right? So there's probably not a lot left at the bottom, but rev is off the top, off the top. So that alone is changing people's lives. And then obviously investing in Team 5 Equity Partners, becoming a certified mentor. And then for the stock that they gave me for doing what I'm already doing, which is selling real estate and capping, I don't get a hat and a t-shirt saying I'm a capper. I actually get stock. They're gonna give me dividends for it. It's crazy. So I'm gonna close with this. I know I only got like one or two minutes left. I'm actually rolling out my coaching. I started a podcast, y'all should go check it out. Just cause I had so many people messaging me online. I was speaking stuff like this and I was trying to keep up with all the messages and I couldn't. So the podcast is Real Estate Entrepreneur with Terrence Murphy. We actually just hit our first 12 months. We hit almost 60,000 downloads in the first 12 months organically. Um, but I'm gonna give you guys a free tool. Everybody ready? Yes, sir. So here it is. I'm giving you guys a free copy of my open house playbook strategy. This is what we've used to leverage to a billion in sales. It's a killer. You're gonna want it. I'm I promise you, it's free. TerrenceMurphy.com. So coaching, and when you go there, you'll see it. It's a free open house playbook strategy. And uh, thank you all so much for the opportunity to speak to you. Appreciate it. Yeah.